we go. We're here. So, this is Waikai. And the culture is on the left. So, there should be, right there, you see that? Right? Where? Right here, left, in here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go left in here. Driving range is on the right. Yeah. Here it is. So, the wave pool is going to be created on that side, down? yeah? Yeah, go ahead, go down. Oh, no. Right on the right, this is the cultural plaza right here. See all this? I mean, the cultural preser preserves. There's yeah, a few in one. They're all on the right on the here. Slack. So, yeah, if you go all the way down and then turn around, we can park, we can show you the cultural preserve. Yeah, you can roll the window. It's locked. This one's locked. So, right on the right, this is the three cultural preserves here. So, right here, see right over there? That's the, that's the side where. It's all clay. That's salt beds right there. Mm -hmm. That's the one on the behind us, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking bend in closer to the cars, but yeah, it's fine too. Maybe, maybe, yeah. They're gonna see us, they're gonna see us. So we should just get started. Maybe right here. Yeah. So right here is White, um, White Kai Lagoon. Right here is the lineup. The, this is where the wave poles will be created, right back here. Exactly the point, I'm not too sure. I'm thinking it's right in there. So the building, that building, what is that? That's a transit building? That's a, no, actually that's the lineup. So. Okay, so um, can you like navigate me on some things? Here. That's the way for There it is. Okay. Okay, so the cultural preserves, three cultural preserves are supposed to be back here. This is from the air. This is the marina right to the left. This right here is all that's left of, of the cultural preserve. This is the end of the road right here. We're right standing right here and this is where they're doing the construction right now. With no cultural yeah, observer. So that right there is right over there. This is that corner right there. Right next to the, um, oh, created by the Hawkeye Foundation, right next to the Waikai Lagoon and the Lila. Yeah, this is a so maybe the guys here. You know, down there is a salt and
me. All in here is where uh, the birds can lay their nests. In the clay. Like, what's a golf course? A pretty lawn. It doesn't do anything. It's not sustainable. It doesn't provide food. It doesn't mm -hmm. provide shelter. <laughs> Farmers consider Evo the most amazing soils, maybe even in the world. Yeah. yeah. And so so this is not what it should be used yeah. for. Yeah. This is what. We need. Uh, I. We need a place to live. This year, this is. And wait, please, right over on the other side. This. How bush. Yeah. Also, place to learn how to surf is right on Hobush. Yeah. Remember when they broke ground here and I wasn't talking about this? here before all this to cater to outside tourism commercialized tourism how much are you getting paid brother Nobody could go into office against it. Nobody could go into office against it. Yeah. 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 So they can start the development. It's crazy because it's say five years to defuel the tanks, and this thing is going to be done less than that. <laughs> less than that. It's going to cause a lot more damage throughout time. Easy fresh water for everything they do. A native ecosystem. Native ecosystem, native Hawaiian plants. You look all along here, you go all, all the way across. You go inside there, you see Nemo growing. Kono oa. growing, abundant. Yeah. You get pakai because it's the last salt yeah. pond in the area. Yeah, get They don't like us be around in our own home. They like us be in the Bishop Museum in the books, that's it. They like read about us. Yeah. Man, yeah. Kanaka own businesses, but come on, look at shop. It's hard because 
think I'm, they're feeding the kids, you know what I mean? That's, like, That's all they see is they're 9 to 5, like, you know, keeping their mortgage. You cannot afford to live in this area. You're not going to be able to afford to even go to the Waikai Lagoon. Yeah. Yeah. Simple as that. 2.2 yeah. million starting in the homes in this area. So what is that going to mean for the price over there? Yeah. It's not made for us. It's made for us to work there. Yeah. That's what the tourism industry is for. Yeah. Kalakan Hawaiians to be showcased. Service. Right? Of service. Like in the Bishop Museum, they want us to be inside there, inside the books, yep. or in the hotel tourism industry. That's where they want us to be. They don't want us to be owning this island to take care of the island. People, this would be Honolulu Uli right here. This is Honolulu Uli. Yeah. So Honolulu Uli is very significant too to Ali'i in every single way. So I'm going to read you something right here about Honolulu Uli. The 1,275 acres is a part of an area that once belonged to Hawaiian royalty. Honolulu Uli is the largest ahapua on Oahu. The name means dark bay and represents a dark and fertile island that stretches from Uloa to the summit of Waianae Mountains. So this area right here, for everybody who thinks it's just dead land, had a lot of significance for the Oahu, especially Hawaiian Road here. And if they had fish pond, local here, salt ponds, then this is where they would gather for Alahui, for the kingdom. You gotta imagine, like you go straight up from here, it's Kukani local, the birthing stones. So it even makes more sense, and that's what they talk about too in the history. There's that significance of that. It's, it's wild. And this is where all the limu was very prominent in the area before. Now you can see the development now as it's starting to push everybody out. That's a huge new concrete bridge. That's for this Hawakala community to go over that way. So the plan originated before they were gonna dredge this whole area right here so that the people could have their own private docks into the back of their homes. That plan canceled out during COVID. The permits were passed through, you know, while everybody was locked down for the development of the Vaikai Lagoon and the rest of the Hoakale development from Haseko. And it's just wild, you can see the coral was removed from below to level out the area so they can start the development. Now this is where fresh water meets salt water, the beginning of life. Hence why they're using the name Vaikai Lagoon. <laughs> but did they dam this? Yeah, so this was like this, right? And then they started doing their own developments too. So like I said, they were trying to, they were trying to, um, make like a marina type of thing for them. Um, kind of like Hawaii Kai, Coco Marina, I guess you could say, right? Where the boats are able to dock into their, by their homes. That was the plan originally. They were gonna cut through it and they were gonna do that, but they didn't. Uh, they, they weren't able to, the community came up in an uproar and spoke up against it. And this is like the next, next part of their plan. So this you water know, connects to the other... To the other side, right? Where we were. So yeah, and this is actually comes up from the mountain side too. So okay. everything comes up and comes down. Um, hence why they're calling it the Vaikai Lagoon because they know where the fresh water source is coming from and they know what the ocean is right here. You know, it's, 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 it's more than just what they're saying. They're saying they want to build the surf industry in Hawaii give opportunities to the kids in Hawaii to become surfers. We don't need a lagoon for that. We don't need a man-made wave pool for that. We have the best beaches in the world. All the kids gotta do is go right outside of here at Oneula, right? How bush and catch their waves. That's it. And a lot of times they only give part of the truth and then the rest lies. That's the majority <laughs> how it goes, right? <laughs> Nowadays, um, the, the, it's like a car salesman. You tell the good things about the vehicle, but you don't tell the bad things, right? Same thing I say in ways. They tell you about what can happen, you know what I mean? More homes, more jobs. 
Who's gonna afford the homes when they're starting at 1.2 million? We can't afford the homes. Majority of the people in Hawaii have a salary of 60,000 a year annually, right? And that's, what, before taxes. <laughs> And then they can't afford to build anything below two million, or else they're yeah. they're gone. They're gone. So, right. yeah. So, so I mean, affordable housing to them is like three million, two well, million. Affordable housing <laughs> that they talk about all the time is not affordable. The real affordable housing is actually housing where they want us to be put in housing units, Prison. you know, like Cujillo Park Terrace, or, or, Mayor Ride no, Housing, yeah, Pololo Mayor. Valley. They want us to be in these rural communities to keep us away from everybody. Keep us away. Yeah. Like a ghetto. Like a ghetto. ghetto. And that's what they call ghetto. But when you go into these little communities, it's families, right? It's more of a tight knit. You see, see why everybody's more close? Because they're struggling. And everybody's struggling. You know, if there's one thing that we all can find on common ground in Hawaii right now is that we're all struggling. No matter how good you're getting paid, it's still not enough. You need like four people to be bringing home paychecks to afford a decent home in Hawaii. Or else you'll be paying what? But I believe it's like 1700 to 2000 for a one bedroom apartment. That's our Hawaii now. This is it now too. Right? Imagine before at all Kiave bushes. Now they, you know, sure they cleaned it up for people to access the beach. But they also cleaned it up for the people in the big money homes so they can have their view of the ocean. Developers really cared about Hawaii, they would talk to the people of Hawaii and see what they wanted the most. Or let the people, you know, build build, yeah, uh, build what build, they build, want. Build what they want directly. Yeah. Because that's all people need is land. They can self organize. Need. We need more yeah. farms. Farms, yeah. We need more farms. We need more farmers. That's sustainability. That's that's community self-defense, like uh, like uh, farms and everything. Everything, you know, is everything. There. It's all part of like the Ahupua, everything, right? And that's what we're trying to do is reestablish our Ahupua system because it's already here, but people are so unaware of it and so uneducated about it because they don't teach you that in school nowadays. They teach you to go to college, get your nine to five, right? To be pretty much a slave to the system. They don't want you to be in the aina, providing for your family, providing for everybody else out here, right? They don't want you to to love this land. They just want you to rent a home on it. You know what I mean? Everybody owns the house, but they don't own the land. I'm a Kanaka Mole, I'm a Hawaiian, born and raised in Hawaii. I know for a fact I don't own the land. I'm just a steward of the land. We're just caretakers. And it's our job to ensure that we malama for the future generations. You know, look how beautiful it is. You guys can see up there with the rain coming down up in Malka, right? And you know it's gonna come this way. You live here, you know all the rains, you know all the movements. And, so you yeah. understand the energy understand. of, yeah. you know? And Aina. you know what's right, right for the place you're living. It's hard yeah. for anybody else to say. It's hard. You know, um, we, have a, we, have a, we have an ecosystem that was thriving before all these developments. Like, people don't come to Hawaii to live in buildings, to see man-made projects, to surf at a, a wave pool that was man-made. They come for the beautiful beaches to learn about our history of Hawaii, you know, because they love the land. That's how it is. Right? Tourism is not the problem. It's the way tourism is and how we bring tourism out there, right? Hawaii Tourism Authority have been done doing it wrong for years. No money has been coming back to the people of Hawaii, no matter what people say. There's a different way to do tourism. Show them the land, educate them about the culture and the significance to the people of this aina. Bring them up into the farms. Show them how to malama aina. Maybe take a little piece of that knowledge with them so they can plant their own fruits and vegetables to feed their family. That's sustainability. We're living in a world nowadays where we gotta depend on the outside resources. 90% of our produce comes in from boats and planes into Hawaii. When that line gets cut, then what? Many people don't know how to farm. Many people don't know how to grow tomatoes. That's one of the easiest things to grow, add water. We need more farms. We need more agricultural education things involved. Development is not bad, but this is 
that development because it's not made for the people of Hawaii. This is made for outside entities, commercial tourism. This is made for big money investors. People in Hawaii, I speak for myself, we don't want big money. But there's one thing that we do have is big heart for the people of Hawaii, for this land, and for everything that's about this land. That's why we fight. And people can self-manage where they are in, in Kuyo Terrace, wherever, and everything. like they had self-managed ghettos in the past that were functioning, they're functioning. Definitely. Then they became fractured when they started uh, disrupting them and, and, and uh, building these huge things, huge units in there that disrupted them. So they weren't, so people can, you know, do things in self-determination and autonomy. They can, they can yeah. do self-defense. They, they, you know, they, they really don't need all this, uh, all need this, this government stuff, overlook, government. overreach, you know what I mean? All and, this type and, of, it's like having, yeah. it's like being in a prison in your own home. We that's don't need that. Corp like, we don't need that. We, we don't need the capitalism or no, the no corporation. No capitalism, yeah. no corporations, yeah. because that's what brings greed, yeah. you know, and, and that's, that's what manipulates people who, who love the land to follow the money, right? Because yeah. they see that as, oh yeah, that's a better way of life. But is it really? Is it really? You know, all that money will never buy you happiness. I talk to millionaires that, that I know, and, they'll, and they're still trying to find happiness. You know, they may be happy because they're able to buy whatever they want, but inside, they're not truly happy because they're missing out on everything else that this world has to offer. You cannot put a price on love. You cannot put a price on the land, the connection to the land. You cannot put a price on the connection to people. That's why we're losing our law in Hawaii because it's being forced upon us this way. People are getting angry because look at this. This is not the home that we once knew. You know? They, they, they never had this water here before? This this this, this, this water was in the area for, for a while. Um, because you gotta imagine there's salt ponds over there okay. in that area, right? When we were in that area earlier, yeah. there's only one left. So water was flowing in the area to establish the limu growth. So it was more like yeah. marsh. Marsh kind of. Yeah, so there's over. marsh, uh, like more of like swamp lands in the area. But this is like a fishing village as well, too. Limu was abundant in the area. Even in this part? Yeah, in the area, too. So it's everywhere in this whole area. I got um, old maps that I can show so you. So is this part of the. the This is part of Pu'uloa and the. So Pu'uloa, yeah. Hono Uli Uli. Yeah. Is this whole section. So Pu'uloa comes across this way, Hono Uli Uli, upwards. So is this one of the locks in, in the harbor, this area? This is one of their lots. Locks, locks, like one of the branches of the... I like, believe... Um, let me go, I, got, I yeah. gotta go do more you research. You gotta, gotta yeah. do more, make I'm sure. sure. <laughs> no, like, uh, because it looks yeah. like it was diverted and, and stopped okay. and blocked off too. So we were over there. Yeah, we was over there on that side. <laughs> you know, so... But there was also local eels in the area, fish ponds that everybody knew of in these areas, right? So... This is the part of Hawaii where everybody sees as the deadlands. No, no. Right? Where do you see it as flat plains <clears throat> dry? That's what everybody knows the west side as. Very hot, very dry, no more green. You know? You know why no more green? It's because of this. Yeah. It's yeah. not because of us. It's not because we look behind you, next to the ocean, abundance of green. And again, the mist, yeah, I, I know in Vayanai, it's called Vai for yeah. a reason. Vayanai, yeah? Yeah, this, it's called Vayanai yeah. and, and, and like, uh, you, you you also had like probably uh, you know the the rivers and the river stuff. everything the fresh water that's what um uh, Kumu Mike Lee was stating right he was he's the one who was basically educating everybody about this area besides just the fresh water me meeting the salt water you know our Ali was in this area our Hawaiian royalty was in this area inhabited this area you know and, and that should be significant enough. Now, if you go over here, you see the plants that's still around. Like we walked around, Uhaloa was growing wild. You had, you know, Aali'i, you had Ilima growing. It's just uh, amazing. And it's a dead land. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, everybody calls it a dead land. It's because of development it became dead. This place was lively. But had underwater... Underwater, uh, under, fresh uh, under, water under, streams. Underground yeah. streams. And so that's why people had wells. Yeah. And, uh, it may have been low, low, low growth, right? Yeah. I mean, but not high. Just like, uh, just like um, near near Waikiki, between yeah. Waikiki and Honolulu. So Waikiki, was all low. that area right there, um, Alawai and all that stuff was marshland, Kapilani Park before, right? It was the same thing. Like, 
a lot of Hawaii, you know what I mean? It's what you see today wasn't what it is before, right? Like, I have old pictures that you can see from Waianae, and you look at it now, it's like, oh, we're slowly, they're slowly trickling from Waikiki, as you could say, right? That's what they're doing. And nobody understands that. Just look what happened to Ko'olina. We got Disney Road out there now, Disneyland, right? You know, and then, and what, what, what does that bring? That brings tourism, of course, right? And, but it's coming down, you know, you couple it. People got to imagine that that skyline over there in Waikiki will soon be over here on the west side, right? That's their plan. Just use your imagination. Use your imagination. Like, if you guys want to go into deeper, look what happened to Brazil. Look what happened to places like that. You know, and that's how the people rise up against that because they don't want it, you know? People want to call home home. Many people are here because it's their residence. There's many of us that come from this land. And when our time comes, we go back to this land. And many of us are gonna fight to protect and preserve everything we can until we are in that land. And it's, 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 it's unfortunate because if you look at the workers that are doing this type of stuff, they hire Hawaiian and Kanaka workers, they hire local workers, right? And that kind of puts us against each other, right? Because they're just trying to feed their families too. You know? But if, it, if, if there's a way to educate them about it and show them a better way to feed their ohana by you know, being so sustainable and getting into the aina, and that's what we got to do. Because there's different jobs out there, you know what I mean? I get it. I was the same thing. I used to work for Reef Development a long time ago. I was a part of that development scene. Until you realize, like, who are we really catering to? We're not catering to the local people. We're not catering to the people of Hawaii. We're catering to the outside. And slowly, people are coming in and then displacing everybody. That's why all your families are living in Vegas and they're calling it the Nine Island. That's not even not even a part of Hawaii, guys. You know, that's a sad thing. That's not even mainland in America. Our mainland is Moko Okiave, Big Island. You know, I just think for myself personally that our kupuna never fought so hard, never instilled all this energy into teaching us everything that we know today for it just to go to waste, for it to just be dried up and dead, right? This is not dead lands. People still live here, people still love here. That's so why you can see the community out here. You got the Ever Beach Surf Club that's out here all the time. You got like senators like Kirk Favela out here taking care of the people as well. You got people like David Alcos in the community taking care of the people. You got Augie Toba in the area doing stuff too, you know. There's a lot of political guys out there that are very active in the community because they come from here, right? They love their home. But to those political people out there, we got to do more. We got to do more. Because not only a few people can do it, we need everybody to rise up and fight against this type of stuff. But I'm telling you, look at this big house right here. Right? How much you think that is? The median home prices are 1.2 million. You go in about 1.8, probably for a beautiful home on the corner on the end cul-de-sac, right? Ocean view, access to the biggest wave pool in the world, right? It don't make no sense. Because if there's one thing that's promised in life, is the end, right? In the end, you can't take your money with you. <laughs> I hope these people know that. And I just hope that people out there that come to Hawaii, that move to Hawaii, understand that these type of developments are displacing people and pushing us out. People aren't able to even access their own beaches, their own bike paths, their own walk paths, their own areas as they would go, right? because now it's a private access only. That's the big thing about all of this too. Little by little, the places that we love, that we would go to with our families and our ohana, we're unable to go to anymore because now somebody owns the property and put up a gate. So even as Kanakamoli cultural practitioners, we still denied access. It's not right. It's not right. This is our home. 
we gotta fight for it. Slowly being taken away. More than just displacement or it's just erasement. Yeah, it's Please educate yourself. Please learn about this beautiful Aina. Please learn about what's going on here. So what did Kiakua tell me? Drew, your kuleana. What is your kuleana? Your responsibility to your moko au how your genealogy. He said your power is in your genealogy. The house of balance is in your genealogy. Why? Because your genealogy tells you what your family's been sticking around for 80,000 years trying to produce in this generation. That is the light that Keakua put into every soul. He hard into this world. That's why he said, don't put your light under a bushel basket. He was talking about doing your ancestral work in this generation and preparing the next generation to continue that same work under Keakua Eo's ha. And the power of life is in the vaiha, the water that retains in your breath and that's why your your uh, ivi kupuna uhane show up in dreams tell you